So is there money in Texas Longhorns? And today I'm gonna to answer that question and how we're gonna do it. If you ask your typical cattle rancher in the United States, they look at these things and they kind of laugh at them. Why? Because it doesn't fit their business model. If you were to take one of these cows to the sale barn, you'd get pennies on the dollar compared to any other breed, just about any other breed really. So why on earth do we raise them and why do so many other people raise them? Well, first and foremost, they're the prettiest cow out there. You can't argue with that. They are just the most iconic. They are, look at that. You can't find that in any other breed, sorry. But from a business perspective, do they actually make sense to raise and not just be pasture ornaments? I'm gonna go through the different ways people make money with them, and then I'm gonna go through the way that we're doing it. Way number one, there's people that go show their cattle at big shows. And in those shows, they're looking at everything from horn length, color, disposition, and there's even futurities with it. And if you're gonna go that route, and if you know what you're doing, there's some pretty big money with it. The most expensive Texas Longhorn is sold for $165,000, so that's pretty good for one cow. Now, is every Texas Longhorn gonna go for that much? Absolutely not. That's the rare one in a million, or probably one in a few million, actually. But if you know what you're doing, that comes out to be a pretty nice payday. Now, the second way that people make money with Texas Longhorns is registered animals. There's two different Texas Longhorn associations, and if your cows are registered with those associations, they're gonna bring a better price. And why is that? Because you can trace the lineage of each of your cows way back to the founding of those associations. And because you can document that history, people are willing to pay more for them. Now, do we have any registered animals? No, we have a lot of unregistered animals and then quite a few registerable, if that makes sense. Which means I could register them if I wanted to, but I just don't see the need. See like her right there? That's Yoli. She can be registered. She can be registered as a Texas Longhorn. Why? Because her mom and dad are both registered Texas Longhorns. Betty here, who's Yoli's sister, is uh, not a registered Longhorn. She cannot be registered. Why? Because her daddy was a registered Longhorn. Her mommy wasn't. And we can go through. Any of them that have that uh, red tag in them, they could be registered. I could register each of them with the Texas Longhorn Associations. Ellie here cannot be registered because same reason as Betty. Her dad is, uh, a registered, is a registered bull. Her mama isn't though. But for us in our business model here, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to us at all if they're registered or not. Now the third way that people make money with them and the way that we are gonna do it is a beef program. And I'll explain that to you why there's an edge here compared to just about any other breed. Now back to what I first said, most cattle ranchers Think of these animals as a beef animal and they just laugh. Why? Because in their system, and that's a grain finished system, these animals do terrible. They do terrible on grain. They might actually lose weight on grain. They don't gain like an Angus. They don't great gain like a Herford. They don't gain like any other animal on grain. Why? Because they're not meant for grain. And this goes back to the origins of the Longhorn, how they were created. And that's by nature. You see, the first, the first Longhorns, or the ancestors of the Longhorns, came over here on Christopher Columbus's second voyage. So they've been over here, or at least in the Caribbean, since before the 1500s. I mean, that's a long time. Now, did they originally look like this with the Longhorns? No. What happened was they got out, they broke out, and they became wild. And across Texas to New Mexico, all the way up to Canada, Texas Longhorns ran free and they had to survive on their own. They had to develop those horns in a survival of the fittest model to where if they didn't develop those horns, they're gonna get eaten. Those horns are to fight off wolves. We don't have any more lobo wolves in Texas. One, partly because of human extinction, and that's sad, but majority reason why is because they killed them. So how does this all tie into our business model? Because here we're doing grass-fed, grass-finished longhorn beef. Well, because they were created differently they have a little bit of a different beef their beef is significantly leaner than what you buy at the grocery store and because they were shaped by nature and they had to eat what they could they actually have a lot more diverse diet than really any other cow they're kind of a cross between a cow and a goat they're more prone to eat different species of plants that the other cows just won't touch so in my opinion this beef is healthier for you why because when you go and buy a piece of steak you're buying beef not fat you're paying for beef not fat and when finished correctly in the right time of year, eating the, the tops of the plant, not eating the base, and a whole load of other factors, they come out tasting amazing. 
Now just a quick note, we haven't processed any of our animals yet, so I don't know exactly how our animals taste, but I can make a pretty good guess because the people that are doing this system and the system that I'm modeling this after, their beef, I've tasted it, comes out fantastic. And let's talk about that grass-fed market for a second because the demand for that is skyrocketing and producers are not able to keep up with it. And there's actually a, and there's actually a lot of reasons why. One very important one being grass genetics. A lot of these cows that you see, they're long-legged, they're tall, they're very big. That's great to go on a feedlot that's finished on grain. But, but if you were to take one of those really big animals and put them on grass, it doesn't make sense taste-wise, it doesn't make sense economically, and it doesn't make, make sense time-wise either. And there's a whole multitude of reasons for that, but the main one being is that that's what the industry wants, that's what the industry can make their money on. But the problem is, is that the grass genetics are disappearing out of our cow herds. And what you see here, is all grass or hay in this case which is just grass and when you look at like look at this cow right here this is ellie this is one of our best ones look at her look at the barrel on here that's created by grass there's not too much room underneath her it's more belly than anything and that's all grass genetics and it's been grass genetics for over 500 years now, even something else that you could do with the Longhorns is that something that we're actually going to try. And that is, this little guy right here, he's not a Longhorn. He's a Charlotte Brangus Cross, so he's three different things. And he actually looks really good. We're going to try putting him on these cows here and see what turns out. But using those grass genetics of a Longhorn as a basis for a breed, I mean, my gosh, they're parasite resistant, they're disease resistant, they eat more than everything else. I think it's such a good idea and that's why we're doing it. And because this information of the grass-fed, grass-finished longhorns are starting to get out, you're seeing the demand tick up, but the supply is not going anywhere, so you're seeing the price kind of skyrocket. So when you even just look at grass-fed, grass-finished longhorn to grass-fed, grass-finished beef, just any other breed, this is always gonna be a little bit more, bringing more money to you. Now the fourth way people make money in longhorns, not llamas here, these are another little experiment. Hey buddy. They're pretty cool and it's a way that we're actually also going to participate in and that is the heads the horn and the hide because we're going to be processing these animals we're going to try and use every part of it the bones we're going to make dog treats out of those the hides we're either going to you know tan the hides and sell those or put them up in the house or something or we're going to partner with somebody to make leather products out of them and then secondly the head we're going to get the head back from the processor i know that sounds kind of you know gruesome or kind of scary or whatever but we're gonna get that in either one, you know, get it taxidermied to where it's just gonna be the skull and the horns, or what we'll probably do is get shoulder mounts of longhorns. Now, you can't get that with any other cow. You go and try and get a shoulder mount of an Angus, I mean, you're not gonna be able to sell it. It's just people aren't interested in that. Remember, in Texas, where Texas longhorns are, you know, the thing, people love longhorn shoulder mounts in their house. Do me a favor, Google the price of those. Now I know that's extra work, and I know it's extra effort, but when you look at the prices of them, you know what, it's worth it, and there's a big margin to be made on a shoulder mount of a Longhorn. And then when you combine those four things with the added benefit that they're a lot cheaper to get into than just about any other breed because so many people just look down on them and they don't, they don't consider them worth anything, you know what, you can buy basically what we've done is three or four for the price of one the barrier to entry a lot smaller now do they have their drawbacks yeah a couple if you want to call them drawbacks the main one being is they don't finish as fast as other breeds do they might take you know four to six months longer especially on grass to finish out so that means that they're gonna spend more time on your land is that worth it to you for us 100% is but for some people it isn't they want to get animals on their farm and then they want to get animals off their farm and make as much money money in that short amount of time as possible but for us, it's worth it because in the end, we're producing a superior product. And I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that we're looking at cows like Rose here, who is beefier. We're not going for the skinny longhorns at all. What we're doing is we're selecting the best traits for our program. And the more beefy they are, look at that barrel on her. Look at her. And when we're producing on a bull like Jordan here, who's small framed, who's got a big gut on him, I think we're going to be looking good. And look at these guys' hides right here. These. These two, especially. Tiger and Apollo, look at them. We've already got offers on his hide right there, but he might be pardoned and he might actually be a pasture ornament even though he's a steer because he's so cool looking. 
there's a lot of opportunities with this breed. So if you're looking to get into Texas Longhorns, you know what? Find what you want to do. If it's horns, go find somebody that knows a whole heck of a lot about how to grow a lot of horns. Here, I don't care about them because we're a beef operation. If you want to sell bulls for $165,000 a piece, go find the owner of that bull and ask him what he did. But what I hope this video can do is just bring some awareness to a breed that is really looked down upon and how there's really some significant opportunities within it to make some serious money. So for more videos like this or just to see more Texas Longhorns, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell so you get notified when we put up new videos. Hit the like button because it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. Drop a comment if you like. Alright, till next time. See ya.